everyone and happy Halloween, it's Matt here from Scoop in Response. Today we have an extra spooky deck tech in the theme with Halloween. This commander holds a very special place in my heart. It was the very first commander deck that I built from scratch just over a year ago when I started playing Magic the Gathering. The launch of Throne of Eldraine saw the release of Sir Conrad the Grim, who opened me up to the world of EDH and the beaming pride that one can have for a deck that they've meticulously brewed. Keeping with the theme of first steps, we've reimagined our spooky commander's deck with a budget in mind. The total deck cost at time of recording is $100. The deck is focused on artifacts and graveyard combos and wins by creating awkward scenarios for our opponents. With a few instant wins added for good measure, let's take a look at our commander. Sir so Conrad reads, Whenever another creature dies, or a creature card is put into a graveyard from anywhere other than the battlefield, or a creature card leaves your graveyard, Sir so Conrad the Grim deals one damage to each opponent. And for one and a black, each player mills a card. So this means, when a creature card anyone controls dies and goes into the graveyard, his ability deals damage. When a creature card anyone owns is put into the graveyard from their library, from their hand, or from exile, his ability deals damage. And when a creature leaves your graveyard because it was reanimated, exiled, or returned to your hand or library, his ability deals damage. So basically, anytime stuff goes in and out of graveyards, Conrad is going to get a whole bunch of triggers. Let's look at a breakdown of the deck. We've got 41 creatures, 6 instants and sorceries, 2 enchantments, 16 artifacts, and 34 lands. I'm sure you'll notice the high creature count straight away, and there's a very good reason for this. A lot of the combos we've got rely on us putting creatures into the graveyard, and thanks to Sir Conrad, it doesn't matter from where. This deck functions by finding creatures that provide us with the effects of what a lot of other cards would do for us. We've tried to maximize the number of these creatures to create as much synergy with our commander as possible. Some of these creatures you'll notice are worse than their non-creature counterpart, but they can often be more affordable to our wallet and easy to come by in trade folders. We've got almost any mana dork we can play in black, and a whole bunch of recurrable creatures from the graveyard, and all of the usual card draw and removal creatures you'd expect to see. This should explain why we've got so few spells and enchantments compared to other mono black decks. We've got 16 artifacts, which are our combo cards, ramp, and value engines. For ramp, we've got Bontu's Monument, Heraldic Banner, Soul Ring, Arcane Signet, and Ashnod's Altar. All of these are really affordable, useful ramp cards that will help us get to casting our commander quicker. We've got two pieces of equipment with Skull Clamp and Lightning Greaves, and we're running the Basalt Monolith Mesmeric Orb combo, which can get us an instant win most of the time. To put creatures in and out of graveyards, we've got Altar of Dementia, Tormod's Crip, Altar of the Brood, Codex Shredder, Mind Crank, Perpetual Timepiece, and Elixir of Immortality. Minecrank is particularly awesome in this deck, as it will snowball all of the triggers we create. As each ping hits our opponents, they mill cards, which can in turn create more triggers to ping damage and mill more cards. For instance, in Sorceries, we've got Forever Young, which reads, put any number of target creature cards from your graveyard on top of your library and draw a card. This card is amazing in our deck late game, as we can stack the top of our deck with cards that are relevant and then mill all players with certainty that we're going to deal damage. We've got Morality Shift, which reads, exchange your graveyard and library, and then shuffle your library. This is a one-shot combo in our deck, and will deal about 40 damage to each opponent. To work out the exact damage, you count the number of creatures in the deck, 41, and minus the number of creature cards in your hand, in exile, and on the battlefield. Any creatures in your graveyard already will still count, as you'll move them out of the graveyard and into your library dealing damage equal to that total number. Peer Through Depths, which reads, target player draws cards equal to half the number of cards in their library and loses half of their life, round up each time. This can be a one-shot win as well, as if you target yourself and then move to discard, each creature will deal one damage. As you draw half your deck, half the time you'll also have a Tormod Script in hand, so you can play it and exile your own graveyard after you've discarded down to hand size. We've got Force of Despair and Defile. Both of these are great affordable premium removal for hard to deal with creatures, which are also going to advance your win condition. And we've got Tainted Strike, which reads, target creature gets plus one, plus O, and gains infect until end of turn. You should save this card for when a board wipe is about to be cast for an instant win if there are 10 or more creatures onto the battlefield and you have Conrad out. If you do, each trigger that Conrad creates will instead be dealing infect damage and killing your opponent after 10. For enchantments, we've got Kai's Ghost Fawn and Gift of Doom. Both of these are great at protecting Conrad. Our land base is extremely simple with 32 swamps, a castle Lockthwain and a Bajuka Bog. It's critical to understand that we've got to be very careful our commander isn't removed, as our deck will struggle to win without him on the field. Thankfully, we've got a reasonable amount of protection for him with Lightning Greaves and our Auras. If Conrad is counted or removed too much in the early game, you should be very careful about deploying him again in the late game, doing it only when it's safe to do so or you're certain you can combo off and win that turn. If you face Conrad being removed, often this could be the time to sink as much mana into his mill effect and deal as much damage incrementally as you can. With such a high creature count, you'll definitely be able to start 
swinging and taking out your weaker opponents. One of the trickier things to take note of when piloting the deck is the number of triggers you stand to miss if you're not paying attention. Even one creature leaving the battlefield can mean pinging your opponents for one, and with an Altar of the Brood or Mind Crank on the battlefield, this could set off a chain reaction of 10 to 15 damage if you're lucky. Mesmeric Orb is great all by itself, but it really shines when you can tap and untap with Basalt Monolith for free and mill your whole library. You can avoid losing to decking yourself with no cards in library thanks to your dredge creatures if something goes horribly wrong. Thanks for checking out the deck tech, really hope you enjoy it as much as I have over the last year. If you like what you've seen here, feel free to leave a comment or like and subscribe onto the channel. Happy Halloween!